Hello and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. I appreciate your interest in checking out this video. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome to the channel. I hope you'll subscribe and visit often. And for those of you who are here on a return visit, I thank you for your continued support as it really does help me grow this channel. In this video, we're not going off topic, but just stretching it a little. I think it's worth it since it's definitely vintage and it did give the idea for gaming consoles to incorporate portability in their design. I know that's a stretch, but bottom line is making things you enjoy that might be too big to take anywhere you want was something that Panasonic tried to find a solution for, specifically with their television. This is the Panasonic TR001 Integrated Circuit Micro Television. This came out in 1970, and it's the first pocket-sized television that was ever made to the public. It has a one and a half inch picture. It was the world's smallest television. Panasonic was definitely going by their motto of, quote, just slightly ahead of our time, end quote. Pretty cool thing that they really put something like this out 53 years ago. So I thought it deserved to have a little carousel to spin around and show it in its glory. Anyhow, this particular piece of cutting edge technology, as I'll call it, had a unique thing about it that no other one ever produced had, which makes this truly a one of a kind. And I'm trying to see, and you could kind of tell from the video you're seeing right now, you might have already noticed it. On one side, there is this engraved brass plaque that says the following, to Danny Thomas, the smallest TV set in the world for the biggest hearted guy on earth. I love you. And that was from Don Federson. That, now, right away, I guess I should probably clarify, because depending on our audience age and location, well, in location around the globe, but then again, maybe, it, maybe it's a global name, regardless of how old you are. But those of you who may not know who Danny Thomas is, he was a famed actor, comedian, uh, producer, and most importantly, a philanthropist. He was born in 1912. And he died in 1991. So most of his acting and producing was well before my time. I did recall some of his work when I was a child, seeing it in reruns like the Dick Van Dyke show and Andy Griffith show. Who can forget that, right, with Opie? And he also had his television show called The Danny Thomas Show that aired on ABC and CBS from 1953 until 1964. Now, to give you an idea of how much he contributed to the television industry, well, he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in February of 1960, 63 years ago. He even had a stamp that was issued by the U.S. Post Office with his image on it. He was honored with a title by Pope Paul VI, and President Ronald Reagan presented him with a Congressional Gold Medal. So if you have a chance, definitely look him up and see how many things you might have seen or know that has direct ties to him. So now getting back to this camera though, I would assume based on that plaque and the history behind it, he got this as a gift from Don Federson. So now who is Don Federson, right? Well, he was also well known in Hollywood. He was an executive producer of many, many programs. Two that I remember, again, seeing in reruns, probably in the, I don't know, probably in my early eighties was my Three Sons, and Family Affair. They were originally aired in the 1960s. And then also an interesting footnote in Don's bio is that he formed his own television company in 1953. So Don Federson also received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his extensive contribution to the movie and uh, television industry. So I guess it's no wonder that these two were friends, and I suppose this was a gift that was given to Danny Thomas from Don in 1970 when it first came out. Now, I bought this from a person in California who got it from a TV engineer who had ties to the industry. And as you can see from its moving around on a carousel, it's in really good condition. Let me, um, let's just top this carousel for a second here, or... Let's take this thing off and let's talk more about it. Okay, let me remove this carousel to get more room and put this front and center. Let's take a close look at everything here. Let's see how that looks. 
So you have to remember, this is considered portable and a pocket size handheld. Well, you see my hand, it is, and I'm holding it. So it, it is handheld. It measures two and a quarter inches deep. So that would be this depth right here. By four and a half inches tall, right here. And by seven and a half inches long, going from here to here. The total weight of this, it's made out of metal, obviously, by looking at it. But the total weight is about one pound, 13 ounces. And the first thing you notice when you look at it, it looks like one of those smaller versions of a camera that you would look with a viewfinder because of this part of it, right? And it is pretty close to it. This is the viewfinder for your display to show. So let's look at that first. And that is that right there. This black piece is the magnifier, really, is what it's called. And it slides right off, so it's detachable. Let me slide it off here. There we go. And then that is the one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch television screen. That is the smallest television screen in the world. The magnifier, all that really does is it, it actually increases it, just like it sounds, it's a magnifier. It will magnify that image. Instead of one and a quarter by one and a quarter, it goes two inches by one and three quarters. So it does provide some enlargement for the viewing. <laughs> but, so it slides right on. And that is plastic. This is all metal. Oh, by the way, that weight was without batteries, by the way. So that's the front of it. What you see here is the viewing area with or without the magnifier. You have right below here, that's the actual speaker. So you're going to get the sound directly towards your face, which is great. So at least you'll hear it with no obstructions. And then on the bottom here, this is the original wrist strap that came with it. Great condition. Now if we look at the right side, from looking at the screen, we'll turn to the right here you notice that they have that engraved black that I mentioned. You can get a good view of it. Let's see here. That is pretty cool to see. And to the right of it, you see right over here, there's three controls. So the first one is the power and the volume level control. You turn it on and it's the lowest level and you can turn it up to higher volume. To the right of that is the contrast and then to the right of that is the brightness. This large circular dial above is the channel scroll. And in this little small window here, you can see what channel I'm currently dialed into. I think you could see it, right? All right, let me put this down and we'll take a look at the top. That way it's easier than for me to have to balance it with one hand. Okay. So. Looking at the top here, you can see that there's a channel selector in three different colors. So there's three frequency bands as shown. You can go with the low VHF for channels two through six. Then the next setting is, uh, is for the high VHF channels, seven through 13. And then the top setting is UHF channels 14 through 83. Now VHF, for those that you may not know, stands for very high frequency, and it operates in a range of 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. And as you can see, there's only 12 channels in that range from 2 through 13. The signal that's transmitted on these bands, the, the VHF band, has a longer wavelength, so they can easily go around obstructions to reach the receiver, one of the benefits. Now for the UHF, that stands for ultra high frequency, which is in a range of 300 megahertz to 3000 megahertz. The FCC had set aside channels for 14 through 83, which is right there, for that range. Now the transmission from UHF has a shorter wavelength, so it often relies on a clear line of sight for the best transmission. Now today, a lot of these channels have been reassigned and designated for different purposes, like channels 70 through 83 are repeaters and no longer for television use, as well as channels 52 through 69, which are now used for mobile telephony. Now to the left here, you can see what this looks like, a telescopic antenna. And it is. This telescopic antenna has, I think it's three positions. It's got the flat closed position. You can go up one and the third one there. 
is straight up and that's it and it actually telescopically goes up to 24 inches you can't see it it's fully extended but it is 24 inches and it's like brand new no bends or scratches on this pretty nice now let's flip it to the other side here from the viewing point of view of the cam of the television I almost call it a camera from the television I don't know if you can see it let me tilt it down there you go on this side here opposite of the power on side you have the um, vertical hold and the horizontal hold and then there's also a couple inputs here you have one right over here which is a three-pronged connection port that's for the 5 volt AC wall adapter I do not have that but it also says you can plug this into your cigarette lighter which is pretty crazy I guess I didn't think they had that back in the 70s but as you can see from the picture here it's exactly what it is you plug that in like you see now for the auxiliary plug for anything in your car but they don't even have them anymore because everything's USB ports right um, but that's what that would be plugging into and these two other ports here one is for an external antenna and that actually takes an input of a 2.5 millimeter connection in this one here is your earphone port I think that is it on this side um, let's take a look at the bottom not much to see I mean yeah that's the connection to the wrist strap and then a little bit of a warning do not open high voltage inside and then let's look at the back which we have not looked at so the back this is where the battery is inserted and there's a little twist uh, screw here let's open this up and I think you slide it after you unscrew it and loosen it up it actually just comes right out actually all right you slide this that's what it was you slide the battery up and this is the little case that holds the four AA batteries and it is just really amazingly in great condition I've seen I think I've seen one other one of these sold or being listed on eBay and it is not even close to this condition I think that's about it to look at the aesthetics and the features on the outside here you know it's really nicely made it really looks like a camera at first you keep looking at that magnifier in the front but um, yeah let's put some batteries in and let me show you what we can see all four batteries are in follow my arrow up uh, the back up releases it so I push it down it's locked in put the cover on All right, let's see what we get. Let's turn it on first. It has eight transistors in here as well. But you can hear the sound. Everything's transmitted digitally, right? So I don't know what we'll get, and I'm sure we won't get anything. I can't say I am really proficient with these old televisions, but I know there is capabilities with this and just having some fun getting things to work with it. Like, for example, I could put my RF connection from my Atari 2600 against the antenna and try to get in, dial into station three and see if I get an image. Okay, so I just want to show you the results of getting something to come through on this television i've got it on channel three four i mean it's not really dialed in perfectly but i do have it close to a three or four on this television here and then i have my atari 2600 powered up i have the game joust in and i've got my rf connection here to touch the antenna let's see i was getting something earlier so let's see if i can still get it Oh, there you go. There's Joust. So, you can see it faintly in the background there. Yep.
Well, I know that it works. Quality-wise, well, who knows what adjustments need to be made. I'm not going to be using this as an everyday thing anyways, but I would be curious to hear what other things I could try with this. If any of you know of some suggestions outside of opening it up, because I'm not planning on doing that with this. Just some other ideas, maybe with the external antenna option with the 2.5 connection in. I don't know. Open to hearing for, for some ideas, suggestions. Comment down below. I'd appreciate it. So I do think there's a rather interesting tie-in from the portability of televisions to the portability of gaming systems. At least that's what I'm, my best attempt is to make the tie-in between that. You know, because otherwise, why am I having this video on this channel, right? But anyways, I thought this was a pretty cool item. Again, I don't really collect a lot of these. I have this and a few other first um, introduction to technology, like the Walkman, the Sony. I may show that, and I, I think there's even another one. I do have three. Actually, I do have three of them. I will probably show them each because they're kind of unique, and that's, that's about the extent of my television collection. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I thank you all for your time and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. And don't forget, keep your gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.